This video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream Real Nice. Uh, hi. Today I's coming to you from our local shit water treatment plant on a day where the weather feels equivalent to a series of wet farts followed by diarrhea after a night of consuming what was probably tainted sushi. To explain to you the concept of what it's like when you come home after work and want to put your mind to sleep and rather than watching something educational, you go to Netflix and you watch some thriller series or something about a reality TV show and housewives or whatever the fuck. I got a much better option for you. You could turn on a channel like Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is an educational YouTube channel with a diverse array of content about a variety of subjects, from tech to history to physics. I actually signed up two years ago and I wasn't even drunk when I do it. This was after I got sober. You don't want your mind to atrophy. You don't want your mind to end up like the vat full of turds we got stewing behind us being churned by a machine. Every once in a while, some guy's got to go out there and stir it up. You don't want the gears get clogged and whatnot. Anyway, Curiosity Stream will help you prevent that from happening. Curiosity Stream is a great way to learn something new while you still get to enjoy the moving pictures. Curiosity Stream is currently working on a program called Past, Present, and Future, where they explore little known facts about human history as well as key innovations that helped advance our civilization. Long before antibiotics, Hua Tuo, the legendary Chinese physician, was performing complex surgical operations centuries ahead of time. Surgery is as much an art as it is a science. Researchers are developing tiny surgical robots known as nanobots. Researchers have already been able to successfully use nanobots to treat cancerous tumors in mice. But how far have we come from the miracle medical work of Hua Tuo? Let's explore the past, present, and future of life-saving surgery. Now, while I tend to believe that we're at the beginning of a long, protracted decline, I still would like to know about our history as a species and civilization and some of the events and people who brought us to where we are today. Go check out the full episode of Past, Present, and Future and subscribe to Curiosity Stream for more of their brain expanding content so your mind don't end up like the shit vat over at the wastewater treatment plant. I've included a link in the description. Uh, good morning and welcome to another episode of Crime Pace with Bonnie Doesn't. Today I'm coming to you from the high elevation fog forest of uh, Oaxaca, Mexico. Uh, you could see we got pines, we got oaks, we got alders, we got a whole bunch of good stuff going off. We got native dahlias, all kinds of crazy shit. It's basically raining here all the time in the summer, okay? You get, uh, you get all that water vapor rising when it hits the mountains and condensing as it rises and then just dumping. And so you get a lot of... Uh, Get a lot of floristic diversity as well. Everything's very verdant and very green. Never freezes here. I guess never say never, but let's say it never freezes here and uh, never gets too hot either. So it's kind of like the climate of the Pacific Northwest or San Francisco, um, but uh, with more diversity. Look at all those goddamn pines. Tons of pines, tons of oaks. If you go a little bit higher, you start getting, to the, getting into the fur zone where the abies are. But let's take a look, see what we can find. A bunch of cool shit going on, bunch of... Uh, Bunch of members of genera and plants you might know if you're in the United States, but you got a, a more southern latitude variant of them. So variations on a theme. Here we go. And then of course, amongst all the verdant green, somewhat chilly wetness, if I can be uneloquent, you have a species of uh, epiphytic cactus. There's the fruits right there. Not quite ripe yet. They'll, they'll uh, redden up when they are mature. You got that cicalium in the background. You got the name Tillandsia usneoides, the Spanish quote-unquote moss. And uh, there's the new growth on it. See with those betalane pigments pr protecting the new tissue. Just doing its thing on a little uh, rocky ledge. Here we are at this hippie retreat. You can see they got a, I don't know if that's, it's like a pyramid yurt or something, you know, for when you go into into your headspace on, you know, six six uh, grams dried psilocybes up at the corner or something. I don't know. Anyway, it's a, it's a nice spot, fancy spot. They've been kind enough to host us. And uh, I just noticed they're growing uh, two species of native tree that serve absolutely no benefit to humans. Actually, I mean, they probably do a little bit, a little bit of ethnobotanical uh, importance there. But uh, anyway, case in point. Um, anyway, uh, I find it interesting because quite likely these trees are just being grown for restoration purposes. So this is Caranthodendron pentadactylon, which turns massive and gets big red flowers that are pollinated by birds and has a really interesting... Uh, uh, flower structure. It looks like a little hand coming out of that red parent. And then, of course, this is the native alder. 
So, you know, I'm just, I'm pretty impressed. It's, you know, just uh, growing up for restoration purposes. You know, growing up for the forest more so than for people. But I guess those are kind of one and the same. But, uh, you know, a lot of us shit for brain primates haven't realized that yet, so. See, Afterwards, Michael Nerdfest in the hills of Oaxaca. Everybody say hi. <laughs> hey, what's hey, good? How you doing? How's everybody doing? What you guys doing over here? You sequencing fungi or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're about to uh, sequence yeah. some fungi through a uh, fucking nanopore sequencer. What the shit is this? I was rubber knocking this on a road. Look at those big white flowers. Rosaceous. Rose family rosaceae for sure. Let's take a closer look and see what the hell's going on here. This thing's pretty conspicuous. Look at those leaves. Okay, this thing, I think, I'm pretty sure this is Rubus trilobus, okay? This is a freaking raspberry, all right? This is a Mesoamerican raspberry. Look at this goddamn thing growing 8,000 feet in the cloud. Look at how large those flowers are. But the fruit's incredible. Now, during our time here, my friend Alan was giving a talk on psilocybin mushrooms in Mexico. So that's, that's what this is. I figure, why not put it in there? That's in Foto de Jalapa. Pero tengo sequencia ARN de esta especie de Jalapa y una sequencia de Sierra Mije aquí en Oaxaca. Yeah. Y es la misma especie aquí en Oaxaca y en Jalapa. Wow. Es muy chiquita y un foto de Jalisco. Y aquí es un foto de un derrumbe y la parte de abajo por el río es lleno de silos de Bezapacorum. Entonces es muy peligrosa buscar esta especie. <laughs> And now he's talking about bioluminescent fungi. Look at this. Wait, can you go back to the first pick of it with light? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah, this was in uh, Gainesville, Florida. And uh, this is the same species here. It's a grape leaf. So the, the mycelium is uh, covering the grape leaf. The key is in photo de Oaxaca and Sierra Mije. It's mycena lumina. Mm. Oh. So, this is brilla mucho for a very 20, 30 meters. Wow. Anyway, here's a full grown specimen of Cranthodendron pentadactylon, same species as those little seedlings they were growing back there at the New Age retreat. And one of the most incredible trees uh, in the world, in my opinion. Uh, it's too bad you can't really grow it uh, in many places in the United States, save for uh, the coastal uh, areas of California. Oregon and maybe Washington, but I don't think it's very frost tolerant. Anyway, remember the Malvasi hybridizes readily with uh, the California plant from Montadendron uh, and produces a, a really cool looking hybrid, a sterile hybrid. Here you can see it's just covered in lichens because everything's cool and wet. Again, you got that coastal California climate up here, maybe a little bit warmer. Malvaceous leaves, again, palmate, and, uh, and there's the uh, fruits right there, each containing uh, upwards of 100 to 200 seeds inside. They're looking like a little chocolate pot. And the flowers, when they bloom, they're not blooming right now, are uh, large and red and pollinated by birds. Very impressive flowers. This is a fucking incredible plant. And here you can see it's just uh, covered in epiphytic ferns and uh, even an orchid back there. A giant, look at that giant fucking pseudobulb on that thing. Holy hell. What a fucking incredible. And they're native here. This is where they're native to. 9,000 feet in the Oaxacan cloud forest. Look at all the freaking Talansias over there. You ever seen a tree full of Talansies when you're just taking a leak in the bushes before? Look at that. That oak has apparently died. And uh, it's got a lot of galls on it, it looks like, too. And you can just see all the Talansies now. Got another species of oak right here. Narrow leaves, undulating margins. And uh, and then right here, we have an orchid of some kind. Jesus. You can see that nice vellum in that corky root with the pseudo bulbs. I can't, I, st I can't get over how long that vellum and root is. Look, just absorbing water vapor out of the atmosphere. And there's a lot of it. Look at it. No soil needed. It's like a, it's 18 inches long. Just coming right off this goddamn, look at it. Just a massive. <laughs> God, these forests are so incredible. Look at it. Look at it to Lancy. Look at the texture. Look at the speckling on the margins. My, oh, look at the modeling. Oh, these forests are sacred, and this particular spot is preserved. Thank God. They got, you know, it's a, I think it's a meditational retreat or something, you know? Maybe they're doing some tantric shit here, too. I don't think so. I think the dude who started was just into meditation, and, you know, it's. I guess it's a silent retreat, too, which is a terrible spot for someone like me who can't keep his fucking mouth shut. But look at that goddamn orchid. Holy hell.
Here we go, deep, deep in a cloud forest, I can hear all kinds of different species of hummingbirds buzzing around. I haven't been able to photograph any of them because they move too fast, the little bastards. And uh, here we got another species of Cicalium. Another, another member of uh, Senecioid Asteraceae, so sunflower family. Look at those uh, dense clusters of capitula, De dense clusters of flower heads coming out right out the axles where the leaf meets the uh, main vegetative shoot. Trichomes and hairs and everything. I, I need, I would love to get, they're just about the flower. I would love to get some photographs of those flower heads open, but it seems we're not going to be here. It seems we're going to be too late. Look at this one, actually you got two or three uh, basal peltate leaves, kind of shield shaped palmate leaves uh, with the stem just coming, again, just hairs on everything. Such a, such a cool genus. This whole, this whole group, this whole group of senecioid composites. The uh, cicaliums. And then up there you got a species of Bomaria. Don't know if it's edulis or what. Orders Liliales, Alstromariaceae, the family. More diversity in the southern hemisphere than in the north, but uh, a, a basically a lily vine. What an incredible plant. A lily vine. The true lilies. Order Liliales. There's, there's the full grown oak. And you can see it's just covered. Just covered in uh, different lichens, mosses, and uh, epiphytic orchids. Okay, now here we are standing at another roadside spot. You can see the hillside is just completely given away. It's been structurally compromised. And so all this looks like uh, limestone with a lot of uh, red in it from all the iron oxide. You can see where the uh, hillside is just given away. And so all this sedimentary uh, rock, all this limestone is just collapsed into a big talus pile at the base. Okay, it's very steep here, obviously, needless to say. And uh, that uh, makes the terrain very unstable, as well as the uh, the rainy season, which we're in. All the rainfall just uh, does a number to, you know, give this uh, this region so many derumbes, so many landslides. Right down here, we got a species of phytolacca, okay, with those, uh, the red pigment might seem a little off from what you normally see in plants. It's because those those uh, betalane pigments, not anthocyanins, betalane pigments, which then, of course, gives hint to what order uh, this plant is in, Caryophyllales, same order as cacti, spinach, and beets, and uh, many other species. But uh, there's those flowers. You could see five petals. Uh, looks like, let's see, six to five carpels. The little uh, magenta magenta units uh, in the center of that ovary. And uh, the stigma branches, too. Uh, you could see where the anthers are still on, those white anthers. You got ten stamens, looks like. I'm not counting, I'm just being lazy. I'd say I'd say 10. 10 stamens, 5 petals, and uh, quite a beautiful flower. And it's a, a weedy native. And then, of course, you got 5 stigma lobes. Uh, no, it looks like 6. Is that 6? I can't tell. Yeah, 6 stigma lobes coming off of the 6 of those carpels. So, and then, of course, there, right here, is the fruit once the flowers are done. Still got those tepals on there, it looks like. But uh, quite a beautiful fruit as well. Okay, many species of phytolacca to poke weeds. This is uh, the Oaxacan cloud forest one. Over there we got Budlea cordata, which seems to be everywhere in Mexico. Uh, who knows what ecotype this is. Uh, apparently it's adapted to high rainfall, uh, chilly, and montane environments. Now this here is a spot I wanted to come back to. I was here four years ago when it was all thick forest, but it appears it's been degraded. There's been a lot of logging going on. You can see more over there. Kind of a bummer. That's uh, not natural. This, these, these slopes should all be forested with oak and caranthodendron. And uh, there should be a lot more of that, a lot more cool epiphytic ferns, uh, bromeliads, and orchids. But uh, since the, you know, in the four years since I've been gone, since I was last here, apparently a lot's changed. The trees are gone, and so you've got this understory of, uh, well, looks like mostly natives, but there's probably a couple invasives still. What a drag! There was some really cool pinguicula growing down there. Cool carnivorous plant growing on the understory of the oaks. Okay, so now I'm starting to get my bearing. You can see how deep this uh, culvert is. I remember cr coming up this, crawling back up it. Okay, and uh, coming down this sketchy ledge, uh, and uh, you can see the terrain is <laughs> very steep. We've got an interesting species of passiflora. I saw this uh, here four years ago. This is Passiflora oaxacensis. You can see it's got a little bit of a dentate margin up at the top. Where the top leaf meets the stem, and then it's got three lobes. It's a very rare species of passion flower, and the uh, flowers aren't open, unfortunately. But uh, I, I put it up on INA, and some guy identified who studies the genus and uh, informed me how rare it is. 
And uh, since then it's been photographed. I think it's been observed like three or four more times, but you can see it's a rather small species, grows in the understory. But, and then just little little passion flower fruits, uh, technically berries, uh, when the fruits mature. Salvias, all kinds of different Asteraceae. There's alders all over the place. Oh shit, holy hell, so steep. <laughs> so hope I don't break my ass. We got an alder, Alnus acuminata, and it uh, appears to have some fungi growing out of it. And uh, see the canopy opens up a little bit more. There's an irrigation tube indicating the presence of humids. And uh, Tretoscanthia, all kinds of interesting stuff. Looks like there was once a pylon for a road here at one point. Overstory of Coranthodendron. Down here we got a Cufea ecapetala, Lithraceae, the loose strife, and a pomegranate family. Look at those, those two odd petals up top. Those, those lobes. Just covered in trichomes. Here we got a species of Roldana. One of the Seneseoid composites, aka family Asteraceae. Very beautiful leaves on these, but they like the shade and they like the cool, so that's why they're up here in a cloud forest. And that can be really easy to grow in a hot, dry place or any place that gets any excess temperatures. Okay, and here's a pretty widespread plant from the mint family, Lamiaceae. You, uh, you get this growing up in the mountains of southern Arizona in the Big Bend region of Texas on down into Nicaragua. This is Stachys coccinea from the mint family, Lamiaceae. You know, zygomorphic corollas. Beautiful bilaterally symmetrical corollas, probably hummer pollinated here. Probably bee pollinated too, to an extent. Okay, yeah, I, th I thought this uh, for forest was a little bit brighter than it should be. I remember being here years ago and it was a lot, a lot, lot darker than this. It's kind of depressing. Okay, so there has been logging, as you can see. They've really opened up the canopy and uh, it's just, a, yeah, it's a bummer. I wanted to show you guys this cool pinguicula, cool carnivorous plant that uh, grows in the shade, but uh, there's no shade left. It's it's so open and exposed now. I mean, this was a, this was a really dark forest four years ago, and it's amazing that in such a short span of time, uh, so much damage has been done. So you, you know <laughs> they'll grow back eventually, but Jesus Christ, it's just it's frustrating. You see this all over the world, every place I go to, evidence of humans. You know, uh, humans behaving poorly, humans behaving very badly, a rather unenlightened. Uh, way and of course I'm not knocking the guys who log this obviously you gotta do what you gotta do to make ends meet but there should be you know the the the, the remedy for this should come from the top but uh, but of course it doesn't because the people at the top are rarely concerned about things like that we still just got that selfish uh, primate impulse so uh, anyway let's keep going on see if we could find some uh, some pings it's a cool uh Tremetes or pseudotremetes or whatever the shit that is. I don't I don't know enough about fungi to be able to expound. Beautiful color on that thing though. Wonder how long ago this oak was cut. Look at it, just covered in life growing on life and then things continuously dying and breaking down and decaying and then being consumed by more life. And then that life being consumed by life. It's, it's such an incredible habitat. And it's just being turned into a Lumber, apparently. Nice Arbutus right there, nice Madrone. God, Cufe is such a bizarre genus in the Neotropics, and a lot of them really love these high elevation montane areas, these high elevation, low latitude forests. Look at that, Lithraceae. You can tell it's a Cufe because you see those two little petal uh, lobes at the top of that Corolla. See all the stamens just pouring out. There's your opposite leaves. Fucking, there's so many weird, there's so many weird members of this genus and they're all so cool. Holy shit. Nice anthem back there. And uh, what else we got going on? God, I can't, I just still, I can never get over how steep this terrain is. Anyway, so uh, here's a nice uh, member of the Verbenaceae. Smell, smells rather pleasant. You get those opposite leaves, all the terpenes and with the shit and that leaf tissue. Pleasant smell, kind of looks like a lantana. You got Phaseolus coccinius, little red bean over there. A bunch of maiden hairs, adianthum. And this it looks like a good substrate for Pinguicula to grow on. But now it's so open and exposed, because uh, I guess it was a pine that was cut down, that uh, 
if there was ping a pinguicula growing here, it would have probably just been blasted with the sun during the dry season. It would die. Can't survive. Pings don't like sun. They like shade. We'll keep looking. Oh, beautiful Talansia. Nice orchid over there. God, I just, <laughs> just had to crawl through some really thick <laughs> vegetation. And uh, one of the uh, salvias I brushed up against smelled very pleasant. You could see this terrain. So, you know, maybe I'm misremembering it. Maybe the ping wasn't here. Maybe it got fried by the uh, forest being logged and opened up. But still, really cool habitat nonetheless. Look how thick this duff is. It goes way deep down in there. And then there's rocks. I just put my hand in a hole over here. Just incredible habitat. It's so verdant, so green. Thought that might have been one of the pings, but uh, it's just an orchid of some kind or another. Look at the beautiful iridescence on that underside. God damn tree solanums. I just put my hand on it. I was reaching, you know, to get up, to get up this sketchy slope. A goddamn nightshade just stabbed me in a fucking... I'll figure out what species this is later. One of the solanums. Got the rock falls that could happen here. Nice echeveria species. Look at that. Nice little rosette of succulent leaves. Probably not too long for this world because uh, these rocks are coming down at a pretty fast rate. It's incredible that even up here in the cool and chilly cloud forest you still get cacti. Epiphytic cacti. That they've of course adapted to this cool moist environment. I wonder what the flower on that looks like. Probably a Selena series. Probably a big white night bloomer. Oh. And it just is coming up in this... Uh, this is an alder. You know, they don't think of cacti and alders growing together. Oh, shit. But here they are. This is massive pine. A relatively open canopy, too. Looks like a five-needle pine. I don't know. I have, I have no clue. I can't see cones. It's so high up, but it's covered in ferns and bromeliads up top. And then there's that uh, Passiflora Oaxacensis again. That passion flower that's endemic to Oaxaca. Still have not seen any open flowers on it. Those are the flowers right there. Okay, now standing on the side of the road, appears there was a fire there at some point, probably during the dry season. Certainly not now, it's far too wet. Uh, but uh, we got a couple interesting things going on. Not least of all, this monster lithospermum. This monster member of Baraginaceae. Look at that. What pollinates that? Okay, it's a very long floral tube, mind you. Five-lobed corolla, long-ass stamens, and uh, get the hairs, of course. The hairs of Baraginaceae, those stiff little trichomes. Remember seeing, not sure if it was this species or another lithospermum, but remember seeing one of these in the hills in Michoacan, too, and just having my damn mind blown. I mean, they're, get up, some of them get upwards of five feet tall. Now, here's a family I don't pay too much attention to, uh, Comalinaceae. But uh, there's some really interesting members down here in the uh, mountains of Oaxaca. You can see all the fuzz on this. Looks like a species of Tritoscantia. You can see it's got these uh, leaf-like bracts that uh, subtend that inflorescence, and then the whole inflorescence is just covered in a bunch of tiny hairs. Actually, some of them are pretty long. What am I talking about? And then there's, look at the flower, the three, three-parted flower. And then, of course, you got all those, what's going on there? You got... All the hairs in the center of the uh, corolla, along with the, the stamens. Uh, you know, <laughs> I wish I could tell you more about this family, but I just, I've just ignored it so often because so many of them are weedy. Look at the hairs on it. God damn. Got the clasping leaves, but actually more perfolia leaves. But I've seen quite a few interesting members of that family. Look at this. You could just do an entire video called Banger Composites of Mexico. Asteraceae is the family, of course. Cosmos is the genus here, member of the Coreopsis tribe. This is Cosmos diversifolius. Look at those leaves. Look, look almost tomato-like. Right, look at how fuzzy they are on that abaxial surface. See that? Got about 30 to 40 species in this genus. Very popular horticulturally. And uh, here you got one just coming up on a side of the road in a damn cloud forest. Look at this. Look at this flower head. Look at it. Oh. Look at all those individual florets just popping out of that involucre. We got another beautiful wild geranium, a native geranium, even though there are so many weedy ones in North America. Look at those purple anthers. 
protandrous, I assume, like many of them. So male first, then that uh, little red twisted column in the center opens up. Look at look at all the hairs at the base of those clawed petals. And uh, let's see, let's see if we got a uh, if we got a fruit on some of them. Is that a fruit? Yeah, it looks like it. And here we go, just blooming right on the side of the road. Close relative of agave. Uh, someone was actually trying to lump this in the same genus as agave. Doesn't make doesn't make any fucking sense at all. But uh, regardless, we get it then uh, in South Texas. Uh, I believe that's the only spot in the United States we get. It. Oh no, you get Manfreda virginiana too, which is much more common. Anyway, this is the genus Manfreda. This is Manfreda pringlii. You can see those uh, tepals curved back, those long ass stamens, the uh, six long ass stamens. Some have already lost their anthers. Look at the look at the pollen coming off. Look at that. Oh, juicy, juicy. And then of course uh, you got the style in the center style and stigma to gyna we seem the female part you can see it right there with a lobe no anther on top just that three lobe little bit up top which uh i think most manfreda i guess this is probably maybe it's where's this where's this thing on it the style on this one i guess most manfreda one of them i was looking at was uh protandrous so it seemed to be male first and that style elongates but this one the style is a uh, Elongate at the same time. I, who knows if it's uh, receiving pollen at the same time those anthers are, are dropping it. But uh, regardless, see, there's one you can see the stamen's already done. The anthers have fallen off, but that style and stigma are fully receptive. Ooh, look, it's got some little, looks like crystalline sugar on the tip of it. So this is a receptive stigma, and this maybe not yet. This maybe not yet, because you want to avoid self-pollination. Anyway, wonderful, wonderful plant. I'd love to see this in cultivation cultivation as a form of uh, conservation and uh, I love to see it even more importantly I love to see it in habitat growing in elevation uh, at elevation in the uh, montane forest there's that the Comalinaceae again with the woolly bracts yellow anthers and uh, there's uh, some sort of dame is it a butterfly or a moth feeding on it and of course so much orchid diversity in uh, Mexico and here's a uh, another species of habanaria where's the nectar spur can you see the nectar spur on the back, there it is. See that? See the nectar spur? Kind of parallel with the uh, tube, with the floral tube. God, there's so many fucking oven areas, man. Ah, I wonder what species this is. <laughs> this is, uh, and they're all so cool. Probably pollinated by moths at night. You got bursicles on there too, those little projections coming off the column. Those five lobes are all part of the labellum. Jesus. And then the, uh, the, so the part of the labellum, which is a petal, and then the two other petals, you got three petals, three sepals, the two other petals are kind of holding up that little, that little green hood. It really smells terrible here. Like somebody dumped some trash. I, I, I don't know, rotting corpse, fish, something. I don't know. But here's a new species of dahlia that I haven't seen yet. Look at those silvery leaves coming up on this uh, rocky outcrop right at this little switchback. You could just see it. Multiple stems emanating from, uh, which probably, uh, rather large tuber in the ground a tuberous root look at all the hairs on those penny leaves and then of course there's the flower a tiny dahlia flower in a tiny dahlia inflorescence my friend studies this so i'm gonna i'm gonna take an herbarium voucher and uh bring it to her okay this is a weird goddamn plant pretty sure this is hibiscus longifilus malvasi blood red flowers when it blooms but just look at how goddamn hairy this thing is all right something's been nibbling on it too some caterpillar look at that there's the epicalyx right there remember uh, hibiscus have an epicalyx up here we got a species of sumac in the genus Rus of uh, anacardiaceae the poison oak family look at those tiny white flowers big boon for the pollinators when they're going off then uh look at it look at that. gotta give it's gotta get some money shots of this so many cool sumacs in mexico holy hell you can see the leaves here are kind of concave see that important the note to make odd pinnate concave leaves holy hell there's a species of hermania here bit nerioid subfamily of uh malvaceae to cotton family look at those goddamn flowers get up in there and you can see well, maybe not you can't you're not gonna be able to see this thing i'll have to dissect the flower look at all the uh, trichomes stellate trichomes interesting leaf uh on it too i wonder if it's hummingbird pollinated because of that red or if that's what it evolved with primarily Herm uh, Hermania, of course, is a, a genus that's mostly in South Africa. Very species-rich in South Africa. Only got four or five species on this side of the Atlantic Ocean. 
I'm just blown away. What variations on a theme? What a beaut. Okay, you know what? That's uh, that's all I got. Why don't you go fuck yourself? Bye.